All right, and welcome back. So today we are talking about section 1.5, which is all about postulates and theorems that are relating points, lines, and planes. By the end of this video, we should be able to use postulates and theorems relating points, lines, and planes. So please have out your guided notes, and without further ado, let's begin. So we have a couple of vocab words that we need to settle in with. We have what's called a postulate. It's a basic assumption accepted without a proof. Then we have a theorem, which is a statement that can be proved using postulates, definitions, and previously used theorems. We have this phrase exists, so that means that there is at least one. We have a phrase called unique, which means there is no more than one. We also have the phrase one and only one, which means exactly one. And we have the phrase determine which means to define or specify. So for example, if we have to restate postulate six using the word determine and postulate six says through any two points, there's exactly one line. We are gonna use the phrase determine within this postulate. Now, I need to make sure we're all aware here. We do not name our postulates and theorems with numbers. We don't say postulate six. We would have to say through any two points, there is exactly one line. That's the piece that we need to know. We don't use postulate six. The only time we're going to use a name for our postulates and theorems is if there is one. So for example, the segment addition postulate, that is widely accepted. The angle addition postulate, widely accepted name. But if you were to leave our class and you were to go to some other school, some other class, and you said, oh, I know, you know, theorem 2-11. They're going to say, what is it? Because that doesn't relate to us. We only have those types of names and numbers because that's the order we're going through with our curriculum. We need to know that through any two points, there is exactly one line. We don't need to know the name postulate six. So please, please, please be aware that we do not, again, we do not say postulate six or theorem 2-11. We're going to say through any two points, there is exactly one line. So let's now take that phrase, through any two points, there's exactly one line, and use the word determine. So we would say two points determine a line. Now there's a lot more relationships that we have to talk about. So let's talk about the relationships between points. And this is a long list. So we have two points must be collinear. They will always be collinear. Two points must be collinear. Three points may be collinear or non-collinear. It's possible for three points to be both. Three points must be coplanar. Three points determine a plane. Three non-collinear points determine a plane. Four points may be coplanar or non-coplanar. Four non-coplanar points determine a space. Space contains at least four non-coplanar points. And there are three ways to determine a plane. So we could have three non-collinear points determining a plane. We could have a line and a point not on the line that determine a plane. And we have two intersecting lines determine a plane. Here is a quick little diagram to assist with how we name or determine planes. Three non-collinear points, a line and a point not on the line, and two intersecting lines. We also have relationships between two lines in the same plane. Either two lines are parallel or they intersect in exactly one point. So again, we can have two lines that are parallel in the same plane or two lines that intersect at exactly one point within the plane. We have some relationships between a line and a plane. Either a line and a plane are parallel or they intersect in exactly one point or the plane contains the line. 
I want to look at the diagram specifically in the middle. Notice how we have a point that is in the plane. Above it, we have a solid ray, and below it, we have a dotted ray up until we show the boundary of our drawn plane. Now, this again shows that you would not be able to see this line underneath the plane. That's where the dashed lines come in when we are drawing and we are describing a diagram. And finally, we have relationships between two planes. Either two planes are parallel or they intersect in a line. Those are the only two types of diagrams that, or the two types of relationships, I should say, that are going to be between two planes. Either they're going to be parallel or they're going to intersect, and when they intersect, they form a line. Great job with this, kiddos. Please work on problems 1 through 33 on the guided notes. That should be, I believe, the whole back page of your guided notes. Keep up the great work. Keep making yourself proud. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you soon.